You saw the security situation uh, on Capitol Hill with the inauguration and all the troops there sleeping inside the Capitol and then sleeping in those parking lots. Uh, this situation um, wrong for a lot of different reasons. I want to bring in Sebastian Gorka, host of the great podcast America First with Sebastian Gorka. Of course, this former strategist to President Trump and one of the smartest guys around. Sebastian, well, Sebastian, welcome back to Newsmax. How are you tonight? Great to be back. And first things first, congratulations on Newsmax crushing the ratings figures, and especially to Greg Kelly reports for beating a, what's their name? It rhymes with box or something, but you're doing just great, Greg. Well done. <laughs> Sebastian, thank you so much. We are very excited. Um, it's good to have you back. And uh, look, I know you're in the middle of it. Um, I felt like the troops were used for political reasons before, during, and right up until they lost their value and then they were literally thrown away to a parking lot. It is an utter disgrace. Let's start with what you just mentioned. This was political theater. We have never had two and a half divisions of the National Guard deployed to Washington, D.C., 12-foot-high fences with razor wire and humvees shutting down all our bridges. Why? Because some idiots stormed Congress. That's an outrage. We've had 10 months of violence across America, $3 billion worth of damage. We've had 30 Americans who were killed, half of them black. When, when was the National Guard deployed to help them? And now this latest story, look, let, let's, let me clear. I, I served in the British Territorial Army, which is a little bit analogous to the National Guard. And yes, these aren't regulars, but they've got day jobs. They come here from their day jobs to do the work that they have been tasked to do. And then you have uh, Congressman Cohen say because they're white males who voted for Trump, they could be domestic terrorists. Or we have them kicked out to a parking lot, 5,000 of them, because one congressman sees a guardsman at Dunkin' Donuts without a mask. It is a disgrace. They are being used as political pawns, and it has to stop. But it tells you who the Democrats are, Greg. Yeah, and, you know, they were all on message. This is an interesting talking point. It had to be a talking point disseminated to every talking head and Democrat and member of Congress. Watch the comparison they make to a war zone. We have more troops on the mall than we do today in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Syria combined. More troops in Washington than in wars overseas. D.C. is like a war zone right now with more troops than Iraq, Afghanistan, and Syria combined. There are more troops in Washington, D.C. than in Iraq and Afghanistan combined. <laughs> now, obviously, you know, and by the way, they took them out of their jobs, as you mentioned, their full-time civilian jobs, just so they could make this political point. And I think the message is, look at all these troops we need to keep these crazy Trump supporters from ruining Inauguration Day. Uh, and let's, let's just look at the broader picture. Who, who are they protecting D.C. from? 74 million Americans voted for Donald Trump. We're supposed to be in an era of peace and unity, the Biden administration, but you're, you're trying to create a new Berlin Wall in America, and then you're saying the people who are going to stand on the wall are likely Trump voters who may be domestic terrorists. This is the opposite of what you have to do in America. I predict, just like under Obama, Greg, we are going to see years and years of even more divisive racial tension, not coming from the right, from coming from a party that has normalized violence, from Maxine Waters to Obama to Biden himself, who said, I'd take Donald Trump around the back of the shed and I'd punch him. Uh, hang on, I thought it's peace and harmony time. So it's, it's hypocrisy, more hypocrisy than we've ever seen before, and sadly, predictable. Sebastian, what do you recommend folks do on the right, folks who are concerned about the present and the future? Um, what should we do in the meantime? What kind, there's talk from time to time about a new party. Uh, and also, what do you think President Trump is going to do? He said the other day he's going to watch and he's going to listen. I do think we may not hear from him for a while. He's going to kind of evaluate the whole scene. It may take him a while. So what do you think he might do and what should the rest of us do? 
Well, look, I was there at Andrews Air Force Base uh, with the president listening to him and Melania uh, on, on January 20th, and he said it. I will be back in one shape or form or another. All I know is he will be the conservative kingmaker for the foreseeable future. I don't want there to be a third party. Third parties are a disaster. You'd split the right. That's how we got Bill Clinton, thanks to Ross Perot. But what should Americans do? Don't give up. Don't despair. Despair and resignation is un-American. We didn't do it in 1776. We didn't do it after Pearl Harbor. We didn't do it after 9-11. Get engaged. Get involved. We've got amazing freshman uh, congresswomen and congressmen like uh, Congressman Green, like Lauren Bobert. Get involved. You don't have to be a congressman. Run for local office. Run for the school board. Don't give up. You're a Marine, Greg. You know that we hold the line. We, we never give up. We never give in. And if we stay loyal to our values as Americans, we will win. It's not just the, the guy in the White House. It's who we are. And we don't give up if we're Americans. You know, there is a silver lining. We were both pulling for Donald Trump. We desperately wanted him to win. Um, but now that he's in this phase, it's up to us, up to others. You know, it would have been fun to watch the Trump show for a few more years, watch him do amazing things, say outrageous stuff that I happen to like. Uh, but this kind of the, the, the responsibility is passed on. Real quick, what did you do in the British Army? What was your specific job? That's so cool. <laughs> I uh, have a guess. My MOS, I was a trained interrogator. I was in MI, a military intelligence, I was in the intelligence corps of the British Territorial Army, and I was a trained interrogator. Wow. That's, that's, a, that's an art form, by the way. Did they teach you how to detect when somebody is not telling the truth? Um, yeah, we, we had lots of, um, we, we basically helped our guys, our special forces guys, the regiment in Hereford and our flyboys uh, to prepare for if they were captured. But yes, if the balloon had ever gone up, I would have been interrogating Soviet officers. But thank the good Lord, it never did. That's pretty cool. I've undergone that training, uh, you know, where they interrogate you. And it's uh, very, it's all classified, so I can't give any details. And I noticed you didn't give too many details as well. It's still <laughs> classified. Sebastian Gorka. I Thank you, sir. I know how to keep secrets. You know how to keep secrets. Yes, of course. That's one of the reasons why Trump still likes you. <laughs> Sebastian Gorka, everybody. Check out the podcast, America First, uh, with Sebastian Gorka. Thank you, sir, very, very much. God bless. Simplify. Simplify, indeed. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel now in more than 70 million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system doesn't carry Newsmax, call them, tell them you want Newsmax TV because we're real news for real people.